Alexa, increase the volume of chocolate by three. Okay. What you see here is a fully automated M&M launching machine that delivers chocolate on command wherever you are in the room. Due to COVID-19, many of us are under quarantine, so I thought, what better way to try and enjoy time stuck at home than to make it rain candy? In this video, I'm going to walk you through how my machine works, how it stacks up against other snack throwing robots on the internet, and we'll even get to see what machine gun mode looks like. But first, we need to talk about parabolas. If we ignore air resistance, a parabola can be defined as the arc an object describes when launched through space. The shape of a parabolic arc is determined by three variables the object's departure angle, initial velocity, and acceleration due to gravity. Because gravity's acceleration is always the same, we really only care about the other two variables, angle and velocity. In order to control how an object moves through space, you need to have control over one of these factors at a minimum. As you can see in this simulation, if I change the initial velocity, but leave the angle constant, I can still change where the parabola intersects the ground. I have similar control if I keep the velocity constant and change just the angle. Although you only need to change one of these variables to determine where your object will land, changing both of them lends much greater control over the path of the object through space. Now that we understand the theory behind throwing things, let's take a look at how my machine puts that theory into practice. This thing is an absolute beast, consisting of two Arduino Nanos slaved to a Raspberry Pi, three servos, two motor drivers, a brush DC motor, a Hall Effect magnetic limit switch, two voltage converters, a USB camera, lots of 3D printed parts, and an Amazon Echo Dot, with a cordless drill battery as the primary power source. The way I went about building the shooting mechanism uses some of the same principles as baseball pitching machines. I put a compliant wheel on a shaft sitting a few millimeters above this feeder chute, which can hold up to 10 M&Ms. To launch an M&M, we spin up the shaft to around 1500 RPM, push an M&M into the wheel using this servo, and presto, flying candy. Most of the other snack throwing robots found online employ a spring-loaded throwing mechanism. While this is a perfectly viable method, it has two main drawbacks. The first of which is that you can't dynamically change your exit velocity which means you only have limited control over your parabolic arc. The second drawback to using springs is that it limits your firing speed. Springs work by storing up a bunch of potential energy, then releasing it all very quickly. This means that you can only shoot one object at a time, then you have to wait until your spring is fully compressed before you can shoot again. Because my machine uses a flywheel design instead of springs, it can dynamically alter the output velocity by changing the speed of the flywheel, and it has an insane max firing speed, but more on that later. One of the main drawbacks of a flywheel design is that all of your projectiles have to be exactly the same shape, which is the main reason my machine launches regular M&Ms as they are all relatively the same shape, rather than peanut M&Ms which are often inconsistent and lumpy in shape. During initial testing, the motor I used to bring the flywheel up to speed was slightly overpowered. I was aiming for a maximum range of about 14 feet, but instead it shot 14 yards and it had a maximum exit velocity of 40 miles per hour. Even though my machine's performance technically exceeded my expectations, I decided I'd rather not try to catch a piece of candy breaking the residential speed limit. So I swapped out the motor for one with a lower RPM, and I got the max exit velocity down to a more reasonable 23 miles per hour. The last thing I want to cover on the flywheel is how we measure its velocity. I installed a Hall Effect magnetic limit switch here. This limit switch is triggered whenever it's near a magnet. I also installed two magnets on opposite sides of the shaft that pass by the switch. By counting the time in between each pulse from the limit switch, we can determine how fast the flywheel is spinning in rotations per minute. This is important because it allows us to create a closed feedback loop. If you've ever driven a car, then you've used a closed feedback loop in your own brain. If your speedometer says you are going too fast, you slow down. Too slow, and you speed up. We are doing essentially the same thing with our microcontroller. We set up a control loop that allows the microcontroller to dynamically adjust the motor output until our encoder reports the desired RPM. 
Utilizing a closed feedback loop in this way allows us to have much more consistent control over the exit velocity of our M&M. Now that we can control the velocity of our M&Ms, we still have to find a way to change the exit angle. To do that, I simply mounted the flywheel assembly onto a turret with 2 degrees of freedom, driven by servos. This gives us control over not only the exit angle, or pitch, but also the direction in which we shoot, or yaw. You'll notice that there's a box under the flywheel assembly. This is a 3D printed sled filled with pennies acting as a counterweight. The purpose of this counterweight is to move the flywheel center of gravity closer to the center of rotation of the servo, thus alleviating strain on the servo when it rotates. To recap, we now have the ability to launch an M&M at whatever angle, velocity, and in whatever direction we want. But we're still missing one key component, and that's where to launch the candy. In order for this machine to work as intended, it needs to have a robust way of determining where the user is with respect to where the turret is. And to do that, we turn to vision processing. Vision processing is enabling computers to extract data from images and videos, which I think is stupid cool. For our purposes, we are going to be detecting all of the faces in an image and calculating how far away they are. I went about doing this using a USB camera and a Python script running on a Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look at how the code works. The Python script operates as follows. When the Pi receives a command to launch an M&M, it takes an image from the camera. Then it runs facial detection and draws bounding boxes around any faces it finds. Next, it rotates the turret to point towards the face. After that, we run facial landmark detection, which finds the approximate location of certain features of the human face, such as the corners of the eyes, ridge of the nose, tip of the chin, and so on. These facial landmarks are what allow us to determine how far away each face is. By comparing the distances in pixels between certain landmarks versus their actual distances apart in millimeters, we can estimate the distance between the lens of the camera and the face being detected. Now that we know how far we need to shoot our M&M, we can simply find a parabola that travels that distance, then fire away. But it doesn't stop there. I even threw in some facial recognition code and added a secure operation mode. When in this mode, if the Raspberry Pi is triggered and it finds a face it doesn't recognize, nothing happens. But if the Pi is triggered and it finds my face, it delivers M&Ms as requested. In terms of accuracy, I've found that my machine generally gets within a foot of the desired distance. While that would be pretty bad accuracy if we were aiming for a stationary target, fortunately for us, the user can simply move to catch the candy, which makes this small amount of inconsistency a non-issue. To top it all off, I even made the turret voice activated using Amazon Alexa. I did this using a Python library called Synric. This library essentially allows me to disguise my Raspberry Pi as a smart TV named Chocolate. So when I say, Alexa, increase the volume of chocolate by two. Okay. Alexa thinks she is commanding a smart TV named Chocolate to increase its volume by two. But in reality, she is commanding my Raspberry Pi to shoot that number of M&Ms. Once my machine worked as I initially intended, it was time to answer the real question. What else can you do with a 20 mile per hour M&M machine gun? If you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell to turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.